what happened they were divided not only the by the wars i think some threatenings some beatings ah <laughs> huh? sadukis were saying there is no hell these surprises were said there is hell these were saying there is no resurrection parsis were saying there is heaven there is resurrection on the meantime <laughs> this apostle paul was released from the trial <laughs> amen he did not do anything he did not lied also he is it is he said what he said he has been saying there is a resurrection he has been saying from the beginning there is a hell he is saying from the beginning there is a heaven so this is the same thing he said to the parishes he did not lied also just he said what he had did but he has been released and they were divided into the groups <laughs> we can see there uh, also like that uh, from this very verse uh, we can see the beliefs of sadukis and uh, parishes and i would like to uh, show some scripture of these parishes also they were very strict in the tithe if we know from this beliefs they believes in hell they believes in heaven they believes in resurrection so why did not they believe in jesus and why did these people did anything evil as per this beliefs we can identify them as a good people am i right but they are not as per the uh, scripture we can see matthew chapter 23 24 matthew chapter 23 and 24 can you help me with that matthew chapter 23 yes verse 24 you blind guides who strain out a gnat but swallow a camel verse 25 yeah from 23 we can see uh, it will be very much better from we 23 verse 23 as directly the jesus says to the parishes we can see directly yeah from 23 what to you teachers of the law and pharisees you hypocrites you give a tenth of your spices mint dill and cumin but you have neglected the more important matters of the law justice mercy and faithfulness you should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former 24 you blind guides you strain out a gnat but swallow a camel amen did you understand anything yeah what the jesus wants to try to say something is he directly states to the parishes that i have mentioned on the ninth point they were very strict on the tithe how they were very strict means if he purchases a cumin they will give tithe on cumin if they purchases mint mint leaves they will give tithe on mint leaves if they purchases 10 suits they will give one suit to the high priest if they purchase anything they will give tithe in everything even the mint even the cumin even everything amen but why they are called not good people because as we go on to the 24th verse the jesus says you blind guides straining of a gnat and swallowing out a camel you were like straining out of a gnat and swallowing a camel what does it mean what does it actually mean what the jesus really wants to convey what the concept of the text is jewish had a tradition jewish had a tradition and they have a commandment they have a law that only particular animals should be eaten amen are you getting me from the book of leviticus we can see god has commanded only few animals to be eaten few animals are to be spared not to be eaten are you getting me yeah in the same way what this parishes will do is out of uh, according to the jewish tradition and according to the moses law eating of camel is out of the law 
camel should not be eat camel it should not be eat eat by the jews or the israels what these pharisees do is on the camel also as per the leviticus camel is mentioned on the same verses or below verses we can see this jews or israel should not eat mosquitoes also mosquitoes because it is not mentioned what should be eat it is not mentioned so they were in a manner of if they were drinking drinking a tea if they were drinking a tea and suddenly a fly or mosquito comes and fall onto the tea they will pour all the tea amen and they will eat big camel are you getting me how full is they are they were thinking flies and mosquitoes are not mentioned in the bible to be eaten so they avoided it and the particularly the verses the jews or israel should not eat camel and they were eating the camel this was the verse and this was the context of the jesus now you can understand as per 24 you can see you blind guides straining out of a gnat if a mosquito falls onto a cup of tea you will strain out totally but you swallow a total camel how foolish you are they were doing they were very strict in the tithe but they were not very strict on the faith they were not strict on their souls this was their foolishness i mean they sin but only they do is giving the tithe who wants the tithe if a person does not give his whole hearted to the lord amen are you getting me these are only giving the tithes and they were believing that we are givers to the god we are giving to the god so we will be saved from the judgment without giving the souls to the god so jesus wants to convey you were seeing a small thing as an important thing you were giving tithe and you were believing it was a very big role to the christian life but you are eating a total big of camel you are not giving your whole you are not giving your heart you are not faithful that's the context of the jesus wants to say directly to the pharisees amen most of the they believe uh, in simply what we have to say is they teach they don't do it they will teach it but they don't do it they believe in hell but does not believe wholeheartedly in the hell if they believed really in the hell they would repent amen they will repent they will be out of the sins but only to the mouth their beliefs not to their hearts that's why what the jesus wants to convey so to this group our apostle paul was belong to amen there are very big of groups in this uh jews uh the first one are pharisees there are many major people second there are sadducees and there are two more groups also we will later discuss on our later studies as we see on the matthew chapter 23 verse 3 matthew chapter 23 verse 3 matthew chap- matthew chapter 23 verse 3 yeah so you must be careful to do everything they tell you but do not do what they do for they do not practice what they preach this is for the parishes what the jesus wants to say is in my translation they do not practice what they preach they preach about the hell they preach about the resurrection they preach about the heaven but they do not practice so this was the real parishes only these beliefs are up to their mouth not to their hearts amen and we can see on the mark chapter 7 and verse 3 4 mark gospel of mark chapter 7 verse 3 and 4 mark chapter 7 verse 3 the pharisees and all the jews do not eat and 
unless they give their hands a ceremonial washing, holding to the traditions of the elders. Verse 4. When they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash, and they observe many other traditions, such as washing, such as the worship, washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles. Amen. Thank you. So, what these real parishes do is, they only focused on what is not important. They neglected what is important. I am repeating it. They were only focused on what is not important. And they not focused what is important to the life. As if they went to the market, if they went to the outside, without washing of their hands, they won't eat. Without washing of their hands, they won't eat. If a person visits to his home, a saduki or any sinful person, if these parishes offer a tea to them, after they went, these parishes were keenly wash the dishes because they treat this sinful ha man has drank the tea on this cup. So if I drank the same tea on that same cup, I will be sinned. They were believing. These are their beliefs. But in their hearts, they are full of sins. But out of the world, if a sinful, one, sinful man walks beside them, they will do like this. If a sinful man drinks a water or a cup of tea, they won't drink on that. They treat, the sin will be transferred from them to them. These were their beliefs. So, to this group, our Apostle Paul was belonged to. Amen? As we have seen, coming to our topic, Apostle Paul was a tribe of Benjamin. Second one is, I think we have all wrote it down. Second one is Hebrew of Hebrews. Third one is, as a law, he was a Pharisee. This was the reason we have explained all this about. To explain, to understand what the third point is. As a law, he was a Pharisee. So, to understand this, we went to Sadduqis, we went to this Pharisees. Now coming to our topic, as a law, he was a Pharisee. Fourth point, he was a Jew. As per Acts chapter 21 and verse 39, he was a Jew. Acts chapter 21 verse 39 says he was a Jew. And fifth Acts point, yeah. Acts chapter 21 verse 39. Paul answered, I am a Jew from Tarsus in Sicilia. Thank you. Uh, he simplifies, he describes himself as I am a Jew. In some scriptures we see he describes himself as a, I am a Pharisee. I am a Benjamin tribe of, I am tribe of Benjamin, I am a Hebrew of Hebrews. And the fifth point, he describes himself as some scriptures, he describes himself as Israelite. As per Romans chapter 11 and verse 1. Romans chapter 11 verse 1. I ask then, did God reject his people? By no means. I am an Israelite myself. Thank you. I am an Israelite myself. In previous verses we see he describes I am a Jew. Sixth point he describes himself as a citizen of Roman. I think you all know it. He describes himself as a citizen of Roman as per Acts chapter 22 verse 28. Chapter 22 verse 28 Acts 22, verse 28. Then the commander said, I had to pay a lot of money for my citizenship, but I was born a citizen, Paul replied. Thank you. From this very verse we can see a talk between the commander and Apostle Paul. Without knowing Apostle Paul was a Roman, they brought 
into a trail is there is a problem for that yes for romans those who are citizenships of romans or those who have the citizenship of roman without enquiry without enquiry that person should not be dragged into the trial as like our laws as our commandments for romans also they had many commandments on that particular one is without enquiry without a particular reason a roman should not be dragged into the trial amen uh, can we all stand up once sorry for the disturbance but can we all stand once can we stretch a bit just for the relaxation just for the relaxation not to get sleep just for the relaxation yeah you are all good you can sit thank you <laughs> so we are on the topic of romans he was the citizen or he had a citizenship of roman amen as you have all the citizens of kenyan i am the citizen of india right in the same manner without a particular evidence uh, without particular inquiry and evidence there should have to be evidence also to that if a, if a person says he has sinned he has against the law so it have to be a particular evidence after the particular evidence only the romans has to be dragged into the trail but this commander without knowing the paul apostle paul was a roman without the evidence without the inquiry he dragged him to the trail and coming to the trail he said do you know who i am the commander said you are a christian yes indeed i proudly say i am christian but by birth i am the citizen of roman he is shocked because his duty or his position will be dragged without particular evidence this commander has dragged a roman citizen so for this reason they may remove his position the commander's position so he was terrified oh i have purchased this roman citizenship to get this roman citizenship i have gave many uh, i have uh, um, fr- i have what we say uh, i have paid uh, much amount but how you got this roman citizenship so the paul said from the birth i was the having the roman citizenship amen for preaching of gospel this was also helped a bit god has helped him but this was also helped him bit uh, to not to get uh, daily to the trials not to get daily to the prisons this was helped but as per our previous scriptures previous qualities we see apostle paul was a israelite apostle paul was a hebrew of hebrews apostle paul paul was a jew but how he became a citizen of roman with all this are you getting me the citizenship of romans will only inherit to the citizens of roman or the inheritance of the romans only but as per scriptures he is saying he is a tribe of benjamin he is saying hebrew of hebrews he is saying he is a jew he is saying he is a israelite and again now he is saying he was a roman how it is possible with god all things are possible <laughs> Amen. Can we clap? Let us clap to the Lord. With God, all things are possible. So, coming to the history, how he got the Roman citizenship, though he was a Jew, though he was an Israelite, means the Roman citizenship was not offered to the Jews or Israelites. It is only offered to the Romans. But how he got means we have to go back to the story 
the paul was belongs to a city as we have seen on this very verse also he was sit, he was a he was a uh, city of tarsus right and that was a county of sicilia sicilia or kilikia or the country is kilikia and that uh, town or the city was tarsus he was belong to the tarsus so how he got this roman citizenship means this tarsus city was not before this tarsus city was built by artificially it was not built uh, it was not developed previously but by the roman but by the roman commander and by the roman king he wants to develop the roman city so what he did is he went to he went to this sicilia or k this uh, tarsus city it was not developed so he had a thought the roman king had a thought what he thought is bringing some jews from jerusalem to this tarsus why bringing of jews because every jew had some talent as per the law it has to be made as we if we see on the jesus jesus was know how to do the carpenter work amen are you getting me this was their traditions every man in the tribe of israelite and jews a man has to know his talent so as we see the jesus was also know how to do the carpenter work how to do the tables how to do the podiums because it was the tradition studying the law and again doing and practicing some work in the same way every jew has some particular talent so this was known to that roman king so what he did is if we bring some people from many cities or some particular city many people don't have talents am i right only few people may have talents but if we bring people from the jerusalem every person in the jerusalem will have some particular talent as we have seen uh, we you know you all know that the apostle paul describes himself as he knows how to make the tent are you getting me he knows how to make the tent in the original translation of the greek word it describes he knows how to do the leather work leather work of bag leather work of tent leather work of anything because this was the tradition every person in the tribe has to do some work every person in the tribe has to do some have talent so this was the reason the roman king had picked few jews from the jerusalem and brought to this tarsus city and what he did is to develop the city he established few businesses he established few opportunities and he was the one who brought those jews from this romans right amen are you getting me to not to get in not to get threatened by other romans this roman king what he did is he gave citizenship of romans to everyone who he brought from jerusalem to tarsus amen now you are getting so as per birth apostle paul's father was not a roman as per birth after his middle age he got the citizenship of roman but by the birth the apostle paul has got the citizenship of roman though he was a jew though he was a israelite because this family and there were few families who eventually brought by the king itself to this roman the sicilia tarsa city was the city in the romans so if a jew comes and do some business other than romans will they agree to it so they will not agree so in order to avoid this misconceptions the king itself gave the citizens to the jews who he brought from the not all who he brought 
from Jerusalem to this Tarsus so that's how this apostle Paul and his father and the few Jews in the Tarsus city has got the citizenship of Roman amen now you got it yes from this very verses you can see he was a Hebrew of Hebrews he was Israelite he was Jew he was Roman also with God all things are possible amen God knows the chosen vessel is Apostle Paul so that's why he created a king that's why he created a city that's why he created a town for the sake of this Apostle Paul so there will be no disturbances of spreading of gospel Amen what a mastermind of God we had let us appreciate the Lord let us clap to the Lord and coming to the seventh point is he was the apostle to the Gentiles there were 12 apostles appointed by the Jesus but these very apostles were called the apostle of the Gentiles from Romans chapter 11 verse 13 Romans chapter 11 verse 13 Romans chapter 11 verse 13 I am talking to you Gentiles in as much as I take I am a, in as much as I am the apostle to the Gentiles I take pride in my ministry thank you I am the apostle to the Gentiles from these characters we can see he was a tribe of Benjamin Hebrew of Hebrews as a law he was Pharisee he was Jew he was Israelite he was Roman and he was apostle to the Gentiles also and coming to our session we are going to learn from this point who the apostle Paul is and what are his conditions before the salvation because to understand the missionary genesis we have to know the biography of apostle Paul also without knowing his biography we cannot go into the very subject so as per Acts chapter 22 and verse 3 you can display it on the screens he was born in the Tarsus city Acts chapter 22 verse 3 says he was born in the Tarsus city life of Apostle Paul before missionary journeys you can title it down as life of the Apostle Paul before missionary journeys so we are coming from the birth amen to start our missionary journeys we are coming from the birth itself so he was born in the city of Tarsus as per Acts chapter 22 verse 3 we can see he was a Jew though he was born in the Tarsus city next at about 10 years he came to Jerusalem to attend the rabbi school I am repeating again or you can we can read the scripture uh, Acts chapter 22 verse 3 we can directly read the scripture Acts chapter 22 verse 3 Acts chapter 22 verse 3 I am a Jew born in Tarsus of Cilicia I mean uh, yeah uh, we have got the scripture for the he was born in the city of Tarsus Amen next we can continue on that same verse on the same verse he says he brought up in the city under Gamaliel I was thoroughly trained in the law of our fathers and was just jealous of for God as any of you are today amen from this verse we can see up to 10 years up to 10 years Apostle Paul was in the city of Tarsus but after becoming after turning 10 after entering into the 11th year his parents sent this apostle Paul to Jerusalem why they sent him to the Jerusalem because in Tarsus city it was a Roman city there were no rabbis there were no laws amen to get the tradition what is the Moses who is the Moses what are the commandments oh, who is our God to get the traditions these apostle Paul's parents were sent this Paul to Jerusalem 
Amen. So at the age of 10, he went to, to the schooling or he went to the education under a rabbi or we can say a famous rabbi called Gamaliel. On those days, he was the very famous rabbi on those days. So I think uh, from this very verse, I can think that uh, we can think this Apostle Paul's parents were not poor. So that's why they sent the Paul to some like university. Amen. So they sent to university like that. That is called Gamaliel school. Gamaliel. Under his guidance, this Apostle Paul has learned what is Moses. What is Moses law? Who is God? And what are their Jewish traditions? Under this famous rabbi, he learned so much. And not only that, he even got jealous for that God. If anyone tries to avoid this law, he will get jealous, he will get angry. In that way, he was trained, he was prepared, he was educated under the Rabbi of Gamaliel. Then, at his middle age or like young age, he was on the Jerusalem. Up to 10 years age, where he was means he was on the Tarsus city of Romans. But at the middle age or at the young age, where he was means he was on the Jerusalem. Studying about the loss under the Gamaliel. So what happened means Acts chapter 9 verse 1 to 3. Acts chapter 9 verse 1 to 3. Acts chapter 9 verse 1 to 3. Yes. Verse 1. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. Amen. Thank you. Uh, you can write it in this way. Apostle Paul was born on city of Tarsus. You can write down the scripture and you can give this what uh, mark, arrow mark. So after that he went to the Jerusalem for study. Went to Jerusalem for study under Gamaliel. Okay. Then after we see at his middle age he was persecuting Christians. In this way, uh, we are going to study whole life of Apostle Paul before his missionary begins. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Paul was born on the city of Tarsus. At age 10, he went to the schooling for the education in the Jerusalem under the guidance of Gamaliel. At his middle age or at young age, he was a persecutor. As per the scriptures, uh, we know uh, the apostle Paul himself, he says his before life, before coming to the Christ, he says what his life about. Uh, First Timothy chapter 1 verse 12. From these very verses, we can see how he was a persecutor. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 12. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 12 I thank Jesus Christ our Lord who has given me strength and has he considered me trustworthy appointing me to his service verse 13 even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance 
and unbelief from these very verses he himself describes him as a violent man and a persecutor and in next verse Gal- galatians chapter 1 verse 12 and 13 galatians chapter 1 verse 12 and 13 galatians chapter 1 verse 12 i did not receive it from any man nor was i taught it rather i received it by revelation revelation from jesus christ 13 for you have heard of my previous way of life in judaism how intensely i persecuted the church of god and tried to destroy it yeah next verse 14 verse 14 I was advancing in the Judaism beyond many of my own age among my people and was extremely zealous for the traditions of my fathers. Yeah, and the last was Acts chapter 26, verse 9, 10, 11. Acts chapter 26, 9, 10, 11. We were witnessing the before life of Christ. Of Christ means before salvation. We are witnessing the life of Apostle Paul. Acts chapter 26, verse 9, 10, 11. Acts chapter 26, verse 9 to 11. Verse 9. I too was convinced that I ought to do all that was possible to oppose the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Verse 10. And that, and that, it was just what, and that is what I did in Jerusalem. On the authority of the chief priest, I put many of the Lord's people in prison, and when they were put to death, I cast my vote against them. Amen. Uh, we will uh, stay here. I cast my vote against them. What the Apostle wants, Apostle Paul wants to try to say is, is as we have seen, the first Christian matter is Stephen. Right? Amen. The Apostle Paul was not killed him. Paul was not killed him. There were some Jews who killed the Stephen. But this Apostle Paul was voted for that. As we have seen the Sanhedrin, the problem has arisen. Some has been dying and it was, they, it was a killed. It was a murder. According to the Exodus, murder was a sin. Amen? It was against the law. So all the Sanhedrin members are gathered. All the Sanhedrin members are gathered. Why the Stephen has killed? They were inquired. And they were agreeing that if the Stephen murder was legal or illegal. So this Apostle Paul voted that matter was legal. Amen. So that's the very reason they did not done anything to the Jews who killed the Stephen. Amen. Initially, we think the Apostle Paul was killed, the Stephen. No. There are some Jews who killed the Stephen. But this Apostle was, well, Apostle Paul was voted for that. Voted. It is not against the law. It is, uh, it is by the law that we have to kill a person who is, who is preaching other than this God. So, he was voted for that. From this very verse, we can see, we have seen three verses. First Timothy, Galatians, Acts. From these three verses we can see he was a persecutor and he was a violent man. And uh, not in the Bible but as a history how he was very violent means if he sees any Christian man, a woman or man, he eventually drags them to the streets and he beats him. Not only that, he throws him to the prison. Not only that, he even kills them. Not only that, as per history, he even separated the pregnant women babies. A pregnant woman became Christian. He did not show mercy on that woman. He separated the womb, separated the baby and killed that lady. As per history, it says, so that's why he implies says, he, I am a very persecutor and I am a very violent man before coming to the Christ. Amen? That's how he was a persecutor and 
how his life is because he studied under the gamaliel he was the famous rabbi on that whole jewish he was very jealous of that law if anyone tries to avoid this he eventually drags them he eventually kills them so in the same way we can see apostle paul was saved where he was saved while going to damascus amen are you getting me yeah as we have seen three steps of uh, he was a persecutor to the christians from acts chapter 9 verse 1 2 3 from then from then he was went to damascus chapter 9 verse 4 to so in the journey to damascus god has visited apostle paul but my very question is why he is going to damascus he was not belong to damascus he belongs to the tarsus city and he was studying in the jerusalem what is the job in the damascus means after the stephen matter matter all the jews who has converted into christians who had salvaged who had taken baptism were feared of this apostle paul feared about these jews so what they did it is they went from the jerusalem to many nations amen if they see if they stay in the jerusalem they will be under the priest high priest so they will be persecuted so in order to save their lives amen they did not uh, uh, they did not uh, remove their beliefs they did not uh, went back but they escaped from the jerusalem and some of the people escaped from jerusalem and went to damascus and there they started a church and there started a community these news has come into the ear of paul so he decided not only this jerusalem wherever the jews i must go there and i must persecute them so he went from jerusalem to damascus only to the persecute the christians who has escaped from jerusalem we can see how he is violent he is not only killing the people who are in jerusalem he only he even goes to the from this uh, verse 1 uh, to 9 uh, chapter 9 verse 1 to 3 we can see he went to the high priest for the permission priest some people are been converting from jewish to christians there on the damascus if we continue like this many jews will be converted to the christian so we should stop right now so give me the permission he went and asked to the high priest from the acts chapter 9 verse 1 to 3 we can see that after getting the permission he gathered a little bit of army not only he alone he gathered like his fellow workers he gathered a army and they were striking to damascus to persecute the christians on the damascus amen so while he is way on his way to damascus when he came near to damascus when he came not to the he did not enter to the damascus when he came near to the damascus god has visited him amen god has visited the persecutor god has visited the killer god has visited the sinner and that's the verse the total apostle paul life was changed we can read the scripture chapter 9 verse 4 to acts chapter 9 verse 4 to acts chapter 9 verse 4 he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Verse five. Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. We I can, am Jesus. Yeah, we can continue, but we will stop here. From this very verse, we can understand the Paul's mentality. God has witnessed him. God has visited him. After falling from the horse, he had listened a voice. Saul, Saul, 
why are you persecuting me so he replied lord who are you amen he did not know that he was the jesus christ but he mentioned lord who are you he believed that is the god so he replied lord who are you so the jesus said we can see we can continue i am jesus i am jesus whom you are persecuting whom you are persecuting he replied he replied verse 6 verse 6 now get up and go into the city now get up and get into the city and you will be told what you must do get into the city means he did not enter the city he was just outskirts of the city uh, this is the manner we have to study the scriptures go and now enter into the city yeah. and you will be told what you must do and you will be told what you have to do verse 7 mm. the men traveling with Saul stood there speechless they heard the sound but did not see anyone verse 8 Saul got up from the ground but when he opened his eyes he could see nothing so they led him by the hand into Damascus verse 9 for three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything amen and the verse say 3 9 says he was went without sight for three days and he even did not even drink or drank on the three days why what was the reason because he was repenting amen he was repenting from the past three days that this was the real god and i am persecuting this real god and i have killed these christians so he was repenting 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 from three days that he even did not drink a water also he did not even eat he did not even drank also after three days god has visited ananya a disciple ananya so ananya god has visited ananya and said go and visit paul we can continue on the very verses from verse 10 verse 10 yeah in damascus there was a disciple named ananias mm. the lord called him in a vision ananias yes lord he answered the lord told him go to the house of judas on straight street and ask for a man from tarsus named saul for he is praying verse 12 in a vision he has seen a man named ananias come and place his hand on him to restore his sight verse 13 lord ananias answered i have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done amen mm, thank you uh, we can know we have known all the scriptures uh, after the damascus the disciples of apostle paul had taken him to the damascus there he was repenting from 3 days after that day god has visited the ananias and said ananias to go to visit the paul and he the god even mentioned to which street he was staying on which street he was staying it was a street named straight amen so the god said to ananias go to that street you will find saul so go and pray for him pray for his sight and baptize him so he agreed and went to the saul and from the very verse we can see the saul has been converted into apostle paul amen let us appreciate the lord amen and after this uh, i would go speedily i have only a few minutes or only one minute i think <laughs> yeah after this uh, damascus after coming the site and after the baptism where he went means he went to arabia for 3 years after the damascus he went straight away not to jerusalem he went straight away to arabia galatians chapter 1 verse 17 why he went to arabia because he was still repentant he was still want to repent and he wants to learn from the god what is the god who is the god what is his will so he went to arabia 
and he stayed over 3 years in arabia as we can see galatians chapter 1 verse 17 galatians chapter 1 verse 17 i did not go up to jerusalem to see those who were apostles before i was but i went into arabia later i returned to damascus i mean he went to arabia for 3 years he stayed and he returned back to damascus after returning back to damascus jews tried to kill him amen jews tried to kill him why they tried to kill him because if the persecutor has been converted to christians if the persecutor himself was converted into the christians and uh, taken the salvation who will not amen so that's why the jews tried to kill the apostle paul on the damascus from the damascus he again went to jerusalem to visit the 12 apostles amen from there we can see the missionary journey of apostle paul i uh, went to meet peter he went to meet james he went to meet some apostles in jerusalem and tomorrow we will discuss the remaining things amen